Hi everyone, it's Jay from Itoso Crafts. Thank you for joining me today and welcome to our channel. We're an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrators based in the UK. So if you live in the UK, France, Germany, Austria, or the Netherlands, you'll be able to purchase current Stampin' Up! products from our online shop. So today I'm going to be sharing how to create a fancy fold uh, using ornamental envelopes with the coordinating envelopes dies. And because that stamp set hasn't got any sentiments, I will be using the sentiment from Poinsettia Petals, which is going to be the Mer Merry Christmas. So the fancy fold I'm sharing with you today is the U-fold or bridge fold card. So it folds flat for posting and I'll be creating another version of this one. So you will need just jade cardstock or just jade uh, <laughs> old olive window sheet or acetate gold foil and granny apple green as well for the sprig punch which I'll be using so we'll start with the just jade and a trimmer or scoring the simply scored you can use as well. So this one measures 21 centimeters by 10.5 centimeters, or that is, I'll just get my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> or that is eight and a quarter by four and one eighths of an inch. So scoring on the long edge, I will just extend my arm. So I'll go through the metric as well as the imperial. So I'll I will be working on the metric this time. So scoring at one and three eighths. Two and three quarters. Five and a half. and six seven eighths of an inch so that's basically an increment of one three eighths on both sides so for metric that will be 3.5 centimeters seven inches uh seven centimeters 14 centimeters and 17.5 centimeters okay and we're gonna be adding some pop-up elements inside so for that we will be scoring uh we will be cutting so on the short edge align it at five eighths of an inch so on the right hand side, so four, five eighths of an inch, and we'll just be cutting down from two inch to three and a half. So align, if I zoom. So align your uh, blade to the two inch marker. Press it down. And then only cut down to three and a half. Three and a half. There you go. And then we're gonna realign that to one inch. So just on the right hand side. And then do the same. So place your blade to the two inch and then cut down to three and a half. And that will um, form the pop-up element inside and then we're turning it 180 degrees so it's just the same area so for the metric it'll be aligning it at 
1.5 centimeters and then cutting it from se no from five centimeters to nine centimeters uh, Stampin' Up has um, got a metric ruler which you can purchase from our online shop so uh, if you don't have the metric yet you can just use the imperial so two inch to three and a half and that will that will be the same so I'm gonna align this at 1.5 centimeters cutting it down from five centimeters to nine centimeters but as I don't have that ruler I'm gonna keep it to the imperial so that's two inch to three and a half and then realign it at 2.5 centimeters cut down from five to nine centimeters or one inch align at one inch and then cut down to two from two inches to three and a half hopefully that made sense okay and then when you you can just score in between those two so that would be two inch and what you could do is you can see that the marker has got a line on the right hand side and you can just score in between those two I'm just gonna stand up to do that Ooh, I went about over it shouldn't matter and then three and a half it's just to help it fold easier later on and then again turn it 180 degrees and then for the metric it'll be the five centimeters and the nine so five centimeters score and then nine and then score so which however far you when you cut down that's how where you'll be scoring so that means just make sure it doesn't move And then three and a half and then we can do some stamping and you should have something like that so for the stamping um, ornamental envelope stamp set is photopolymer so you will need a foam just to keep it nice and um, stamped evenly even um, so I'm gonna use this one is from the clear block bundle acrylic block bundle uh, but there is a, a pierce mat in the catalog which you can purchase if you don't have it yet and it will just help you with your photopolymer stamping and ink pads we will be using pretty peacock and shaded spruce as well so I'm gonna be stamping in the pretty peacock first and so you can either if it's a huge um, image you can either do it like so if it's easier because it's a heavier block or you could always do it it, it is a big ink pad so you could always um, do how you usually do which is tap 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 so decide which one is going to be on top when you're oh I just got that when you're stamping I would say um, obviously we we have scored uh, our cardstock so it won't fully um, stamp in between those but that that'll be fine because we are covering most of them with the die cuts anyway so with this one where the score line is I would align that stamp there so obviously gauge where it is I can't actually see and then press down count to three or longer 
so you can see that um, as mentioned it doesn't stamp on there but I've scored it just because I I want to use those score lines as a guide for my for my stamping okay I'm gonna re-ink the stamp and then I'm gonna go on to the other side so for this one I'm just gonna stamp it but have a bit of gap on the left hand side as well so maybe that line or this line just before the score line if that makes sense and stamp So you have something like that so on yeah on my original I did stamp inside a couple of times um, so if you want the look where it's a lot of um, bubbles inside you can do that uh, or you can just do individual um, what you might call it dots which you can use this design so this is with selective stamping or just obviously using a bit of the stamp to place where your um, strings would be so if I show you quickly how you can do that so it's easier obviously you can either mask it hopefully you have seen our select selective stamping video so this is the same you're basically just inking up the part of the stamp that you want to use so for example if we're gonna have a big one there a small one there you can just do that so it's on it's a bit wonky isn't it so if you have a really flimsy design laid down flat I think I just put it on like that so hopefully that would be slightly better So I'm just randomly stamping where I want my strings to be at. Here we go. Because I thought it, it looked a little bit busy um, with how I had it. And also in the stamp set, uh, you do have the smaller the smaller stamp. So you could always add more bubbles with that. Oui. So for smaller ones. I'm, right, I'm just gonna zoom out there. I oh no, I pressed too hard, so don't press too hard. Okay, and I'm just gonna add another one here. So I'm using that as a guide. There you go. 
but as I said you can use these when you're stamping that so when you're stamping it I would align the big bow ball just before or just after your score line there so do it that way and then you should be able to fit another one in okay so now that the stamping is done we can actually stamp some more on the old olive so I'm gonna use the same ink so tap 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 just all over in pretty peacock again and then I will do it in shaded spruce the chamois is quite easy to use on large stamps as well and then shaded spruce I think it will. That's fine. There you go. So at this point, what you could do is decorate and color or add highlights to your stamped images. I have pre done them pre-done mine but I thought it'll be easier to let you know that it's easier um, to use your stamping chalk marker to doodle on your bubbles now my I've used this so much that I've actually run out um, so what you could do is just highlight a couple of um, areas so yeah mine's gone so if you if you don't have a stamping chalk marker, you can use the craft white ink. And I do have an older even one. So what I've done is I've used this um, to add just by dipping it into my ink pad because I'm only I'm only gonna be highlighting some of the areas I don't need I, so I'm kind of like using it as a paintbrush see so, so yes yeah, so I'm just adding highlights so the design is already there you could all only you you just need to highlight some of the design to make it more pop pop up on your um, project as you can see on here so do do it differently just do dots or you can leave it as is if you prefer but i just thought adding the highlights just gives it a, a bit more interest and you're just changing it up a little bit uh, or if you don't have um the chalk marker pen you could always use your aqua painters or water brush but without the water in there because it will just bleed out onto your inked uh, your stamped images so yeah so I'm just literally just go round and at the dots where the where it's already there or you can e even introduce introduce dots where it's not but you do have the stamp image to help you guide where to place them when I did mine um, I did it after I cut it so it was a little bit more fiddlier so it's it, it is a, a lot faster doing it whilst it was still intact in the card but yes as I said I have done most of them so yes so just continue along and then 
add lines dots and make it look different um, to how it normally is we'll add some more you could also do highlights on the what would you call that <laughs> so I actually need one more of this If you are enjoying yourself, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more card making and paper craft inspiration using Stumpin' Up products. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification to get notified when we have new content and when we're live. As we normally do a live during Wednesday evenings and Sunday evenings, uh, but this evening we ha we're going to see family that we haven't seen uh, for a while and um, it's a socially distancing birthday party <laughs> well birthday gathering because it's just a few of us really um, so that will be nice and um, yes just I guess outside barbecue there we go so I'm gonna stop there but you can carry on as much as you want I think I've done more than what I need and with the envelopes dies so you have these so I'm sure you've seen on our previous lives this one just die cuts that easily in all in one all in one go which is great and you also have uh, the edging for this what I've done for ours is the size of like the height or the width I guess depending on how you're looking at the width of the dice I've added the size of the paper or the card that you can use so um, just to help us out um, when we're using them so I'm gonna cut that off and then show you what I've made. So Stampin' Up! will be launching their own die cutting machine, an embossing machine called Stampin' Cut and Emboss. And it is available for to pre-order for demonstrators now in August and will be available for customers from September and there'll be a, re a mini one as well a mini version but we're not sure um, it hasn't been confirmed when that is launching but hopefully soon hopefully before Christmas or maybe just after oh maybe celebration next year I don't know I'm just guessing so with th this magnetic plate it does move it's got a mind of its own so hopefully um, when Stampin' Up! launches their own magnetic plate which is the all all of the base it won't move I could always use washi tape I guess so I'm just gonna cut this quickly So yeah, so it does give a nice border around your die cut um, or your stamp image as well. And I've got those already. And these are the ones that I've pre-done. So I stamped it in. You c there's not much difference between the old olive and the 
shaded spruce I don't know if you can actually tell on the camera but um, uh, pretty peacock and shaded spruce even um, so that pretty peacock is just darker and it just gives it a, a different tone on your project so I've got loads I've done already and I'm just gonna choose however I want to decorate my card okay so I'll put that aside and now that we've done whilst we're die cutting we can um, actually I need to fold it burnish and fold it first so normal you fold or bridge fold so mountain valley and then valley again and then mountain and because you've scored those two you just need to pop it out up and then re burnish that or re fold it that way so pop it up and then fold there you go so that will be your the basic u fold and i'm going to add the the acetate or window sheet across so when you're adding it uh I, what I did originally was add glue to where I'm putting the die cut images so that's why I opted for the middle you could always do it on the top um, and then have a bigger bow bowl there so hey yeah I'll do I'll do the top this time maybe that way no I'll do it originally okay yes yeah, so multi-purpose liquid glue and what I've done as well is if you if you really kind of like don't want to guesstimate you could always use a pencil that I have somewhere so if you actually it's probably easier to do it that way So use your acetate. Oh, I didn't tell you what size it is, actually. So this one is five and a half by one inch, or that is fourteen centimeters by two point five centimeters. So it's it's the length of your normal cardstock uh, for whichever market you are. So I'm just gonna add. It's easier this way. So I'm placing the acetate where I'm gonna put my bridge and I'm just using it as a ruler and marking where I'm actually gonna add my glue. So you can't really see it much, but it's there. So when I add my glue, I'm only adding between those lines. Because even though you might not be able to see it because we'll be decorating it, I'd rather not have that kind of like worry later that you see the glue. And because it's plastic, just make sure that you, when you place it on, leave it time to dry. So realigning it on the left as well as where you placed it. So that should be um, straight anyway, because I've cut that with the trimmer. So whilst that's drying, I'm gonna move on to this one. And I know that that's gonna be the whole of that actually 
There you go. And then I'm just gonna fold that down like so and then stick that down. So you, whilst it's drying you could put a book in it. I'll put my book on top with all my measurements. <laughs> So whilst that's drying, yeah, I think it's dry actually. Just don't move it. Whilst that's drying, up uh, we can stamp our sentiment. So as I mentioned earlier, the sentiment I've chosen is the Merry Christmas from Poinsettia Petals. It's it's actually bigger than. So you can normally tell on the bottom images is 65% um, from what it is and you can tell that it's massive. So that's even better. And I'm just gonna stamp it on thick. Oh, that's just normal whisper white in pretty peacock. dry and I'm gonna make my uh, gold foil I can't remember I actually just had this as an off cut but I quite like the sizing so that's like one centimeters or one point one point one centimeter which is three eighths of an inch or seven sixteenth of an inch and then that is three five eighths of an inch by eight point nine okay eight point nine or three and a half did they say three five eighths Eight point nine. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll do three five eights. It's longer. And one point one or oh, did I move it? This is sometimes. I just wanna do a quick. of a tiny bit that's why I have this washi tape just there for those purposes there you go so that one was two four six seven sixteenth of an inch or 1.1 1 .1 by 9.2 centimeters or three five eighths so that is done with my thing oh I was gonna cut this so with this one I'm not gonna fussy cut it so you could normally gauge as well or use your ruler as a guide to make it straight so I can see from from the window um, where it is or I think I cut it straight enough or the um, the guillotine would be would have been great for this but I'm just gonna cut it and obviously the Y so it's three quarters of an inch if you wanna stamp it before you or if you want to cut the card before you stamp it or fussy cut it and then I'm just gonna cut that down 
I think I decided to fast cut it because you can see more of the of the gold. Because now it's more white. But that looks alright. Or you could always almost is cut that straight. Oh, let's try it. Okay, I'm gonna freehand it. So I'm aligning it there and there. Hey, that's close, isn't it? I couldn't see where the blade is, so I'm just gonna cut it by hand. There you go. So that's a little funky. Something different. <laughs> so now you can see a bit more of the gold. There. So I'm going to keep it like that. But yes, feel free to fussy cut if you prefer. Fussy cutting, I do prefer fussy cutting, but I know most people don't. Or use a uh, sentiment that hasn't got the funky Y. So I'm just lining that. And then I'm going to use to cut that down. Just to highlight the edges. Right. By now, that should have been done. Cool. So that is dry. I'm just tidying up I got so much so just um, redo your folds and then see that it folds the other way and now it's dry so be, um, I forgot you could before you add the window you could decorate your inside so when I'm gonna add my stamped and colored images So this one I'm going to add on there. So obviously that one will be on there. So if you let lie it flat, just make sure you don't go over that score line because otherwise it will it won't pop up and I just managed to just get that quite nice nicely centered that's good and when you're adding these ones obviously use the die cut to then place it and it covers your glue where you had it and if you are doing, I can't tell which is shaded spruce. I think that's, yeah, that's shaded spruce. But because it's on the same old olive, you can't really tell. So if you are doing some, some of the edges, and 
and then that will be most of the bottom here like so and I'm gonna add so let's see what we have so I'm just basically choosing from what I have in there my selection and then adding it on here so I do want more of around the floating bit I'm not putting all um, glue on there because I know that some of it's gonna overhang and Tombow is a multi-purpose glue so it tries sticky so if I've added glue on there it will prevent it from popping up okay and we have this one so to be fair the glue doesn't look that bad but it it has high um, you can tell that there's something there so that's why I wanted to um, change it or to cover it even so I'm covering all of the areas that I've added glue and then I'm just adding more die cut images do what's pleasing to my eye so do you can cover all of them if you want to and then use the strings as a guide uh, I'm just covering most of these all right Barry what's the time what's the time please you okay yeah, I is oh. nearly done. Oh, okay. Well, gone quick. Okay, right. So I am just finishing up these and then adding some more on the top. And nearly forgot my floating one there. Okay, I'm not going to use that because I've glued all of that. So I'll use this one and just glue the top. There you go. There we go. So when that pops up, what is going? Cool, and I'll just add finish up with these on top. Actually, if I use to cover that up, no. Nope. gonna cover that mistake up oh, there you go so it's much less than this one but I have placed most of the bubbles that I have pre cut I want another one it's down here Okay. There we go. So that's done. So as I said, um, decorate as much as you want. You could also use your die cut. The 
envelope die cut to do the edges which I didn't do before so I'll quickly show you that and then we'll have a funky edge oh not that one I did it on my prototype but I didn't do it on my sample so what you could do is fold it so it's a single piece and then place your die diagonally like so use a sticky note or washi tape Just for extra support if you want to to know that um, that's gonna stick on there we go and then run it through all you have to do is run it through the edges I didn't do it before because obviously we were gluing the window sheet or acetate and then I'm just going to do the same for this one so I'm just checking there go Ta -da. so we have our sides scalloped which is quite nice and then we're just gonna decorate with the sprig punch and sentiment just bear with got my spray punch <laughs> so spray punch in granny apple green so just a hint of granny apple green I've just used off cut and then we're gonna add our sentiment on top there so with that we need so on the top I'm adding my mini dimensionals just to secure it because most of it will be hanging off So, and with so you can either add your punch sprig as is, or the way I did it in my original one is I cut it in half, and then I did it the other way. So for this one, I'll just do it as is. Uh, glue Barry There we go mini glue dot All right, I'm just gonna get the braided linen trim I thought I had it So 
braided linen trim just gonna make a bow I want a bigger tail yeah that looks good there we go A bigger loop you can do double bows if you like and that just gets added with mini glue dot just under there and then to finish up we have our sentiment Here we go. So don't forget um, to check out the description below for the links to the Stampin' Up! products that I've used today, which can be purchased from our online shop. Do use our host code when you are ordering online so you get an extra thank you handmade card from us next month. Uh, and an extra little gift as well if you order more than 45 pounds worth of products uh, you will get a free tutorial bundle designed by the stamping glam squad uh, with so i'm part of that design team with seven other peep um this demonstrators from around the world so yes check us out and it'll be free what's more so you'll get loads of inspiration and um the theme it's always different theme each month as well there we go so thank you so much for joining me today um, you can tell the difference between a straight edge and the scallop edge I did do this is my very original prototype I did do it just in black and white just to see so with this one I stamped the the um, strings from the address label as shown on here but with this one I use the actual bobble stamps the cluster of bobbles a bit more so um, you can even put more embellishments like the gold glitter gold glitter dots as well enamel dots but I'm gonna leave it there uh, it folds flat so you it'll fit on a normal C6 envelope um, or the standard US envelope I believe because I have condensed it down and it will look lovely on the back before I forget if you cut yourself a card so you can stamp that first in just jade so if you don't like these you could always cut yourself a matching card so that will be seven centimeters by 10.5 centimeters or that is two three quarters yeah two three quarters of an inch by four and one eighth of an inch so then at least you can add it on afterwards um, and it will hide those black um, those hollow areas and it'll look a lot more professional so there you go thank you so much for joining me today as I mentioned um, you can check out the description below for the snapping up products I've used today uh, using the ornamental envelopes and envelopes dies bundle from the mini catalog thank you so much until next time bye